Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 631. Thank you so much for joining me. Did you miss me last week? Sorry about that. We ran a rerun, I think, for the first time ever. It was show 455, and this is show 631. So, uh, But it was about flossing, and that never goes out of style. It'll always be true. <laughs> so anyway. Oh, and today we have with us Dr. Pagano. He's my associate, Dr. Mark Pagano. We're going to be talking about Botox. And I don't know if you guys realize this, but a lot of dental offices offer Botox, and Dr. Pagano already was doing Botox at his previous office or previous training, and so it's a service we'll be offering here at Dr. Kavitko and Associates, so actually now. <laughs> and so we want to talk about that, find out some of the misnomers, some of the information, that sort of thing. But before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko, and if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. It's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. All past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and I'm not sure if we're doing Facebook this week or not, so we'll find out. <laughs> that depends if I can make it work. So, Okay. Dr. Pagano, first of all, tell me a little bit about your experience with Botox and the, the kinds of patients who want it, the kind of patients who get it, that sort of thing. Like, why would somebody even consider Botox? Yeah, Botox can actually be for anybody. There's no patients that we're specifically marketing it towards. Guys, girls, young, old, anybody can get Botox. If you're old and have wrinkles that you don't like, we can help get rid of those. If you're young and you're just looking to prevent wrinkles, Botox also helps with that. So it's really for anybody out there who's looking to just maintain a nice, smooth face. Okay. And now I have one of my patients who, uh, when she first became a new patient, she told me that she got a facelift every five years, whether she needed it or not. And I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's more of a permanent <laughs> uh, solution to wrinkles, but Botox goes away after three months. So you have to come back, get it done. And it's a little bit more controlled than, and a little less permanent than something like a facelift. So, you know, if you don't like it, we can always tweak our regimen and make it so fits what you want your face to look like. Right. And I think her reasoning was that she never wanted to look old, so she just would go before she ever truly needed it. She would had this, this kind of tightened, that kind of tightened. And it worked because she, I believe she's in her mid to late 70s, and she looks like she might be 56 or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's impressive. That's actually something that people do with Botox as well. Because Botox, it treats something we call dynamic wrinkles. So it's wrinkles when you move your eyebrows up, the wrinkles that kind of form on your forehead, that's the wrinkles that it's treating. So the theory is if we paralyze that muscle and put the muscle to sleep, because that's what Botox does, then those wrinkles will never even form. So that's where you kind of get the preventative aspect of it from. Because, you know, if you're not able to move that muscle and that's how those wrinkles are caused, then those wrinkles will never kind of appear on your face. So people that start getting it when they're young, they say, you know, they're never going to have wrinkles because their muscles were never moving to make those wrinkles form. That's pretty neat. I hadn't really thought about it that way. And then uh, doing that, you wouldn't need the facelift. Yeah, you wouldn't even need the facelift. No, yeah. And then if you continually get Botox, it'll actually kind of stay longer. So in the beginning, we recommend every three months. You know, you come in and we redo the Botox. But, you know, if you're a consistent customer, then the Botox will actually start lasting four months, maybe five months after, you know, repetitive use. So it becomes a money saver eventually. And you know what? I've been asked by several patients, when are we going to for Botox and I tell them you know, I'm going to do it I've actually had the training I just never got around to all of the paperwork involved meaning the pre-op the post-op instructions all of that and I don't know call it laziness I'm not sure which but I mean the reality is think about it and people wonder well why would a dentist do this we give more needles than any physician you'll ever meet right we're using needles every day on multiple patients 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And we know how to make injections as comfortable as possible. Because I feel like a lot of times in doctor's office, they just give you an injection because they have to, and they're not really thinking about your comfort. Whereas when we're doing needle sh shots in your mouth, we want you to be as comfortable as possible. And so we're more conscious of that than I think than a lot of physicians are. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the needle, the gauge is uh, 31, 31 gauge? Oh, yeah, 31 gauge, yeah. I mean, I might have a high pain tolerance, but I've, I've gotten it done before, and you barely, barely, barely feel it. So people who are needle Phobic, you know, it's barely a needle. Mm -hmm. I swear it feels like nothing's happening. It's almost like the acupuncture needles in size, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very similar in size. Yeah, so it's something you, you don't really feel. And we also have some things we can kind of put on your skin too to kind of lessen the pinch of the needle as well. Is that em emula? I think it's called. What's the uh, that drug? There's actually a couple different wipes that we have available that are just kind of anesthetics that are put into the wipe that we just kind of rub on the skin to just you know help with the pinch. Okay. And then the other thing is, is if you think about it, and I do. We do a lot of smile makeovers, so we're kind of in the beauty business. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it definitely helps with facial aesthetics, something that we're always looking at. We're looking at it with your mouth, but you know, when we are looking at your mouth, we're actually looking at your entire face already. So it's something that we're already used to and we already have an eye for. Right, so think about it. Orthodontics makes you more attractive if your teeth are straight. Porcelain veneers make you more attractive if your teeth aren't kind of like have craze lines or they're cracked or chipped. Other things like implants can support the bones in your face and give you that full look that you used to have maybe before you lost a tooth. So it makes a lot of sense that a dental office provide Botox, and I know several of my patients are going to be very happy that we're finally doing it. And I wanted to let people know, we mentioned 31 gauge. Well, those of you that use insulin, diabetics, the gauge of that needle is a 33, and those are really tiny, and so a 31 is just a, just a titch bigger, right? <laughs> yeah, just a, the smallest bigger, but again, you know, it's something that's you barely, barely feel. It's pretty easy, I think. Okay, awesome. And you know, a lot of diabetics, they have to give themselves injections, and so they wouldn't do it if it was a big bore needle of, of any kind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and a lot of people give Botox to themselves as well, so <laughs> it's something similar. <laughs> I think some of these people are more afraid of needles than dying of diabetes, you know, than <laughs> at least some of our patients. But anyway, so no, that that's really cool. And so what we want to talk about is what is it? What are the concerns before an appointment? What are the concerns during an appointment? after an appointment. There are a lot of maybe misconceptions, and we're going to go over those as well. And so that's probably probably the biggest thing would be sorting out for people what's false and what's true about this whole uh, Botox thing, okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's just a lot of rumors that, you know, when people even bring it up, you know, they just start saying things that kind of aren't true about it that have gotten passed around. So, yeah, we're here to tell you what is actually true about it and what to expect if you come in and get the treatment. And I think it comes from the comedians who joke about people like Nancy Pelosi and they say she hasn't smiled in 20 years or something. <laughs> yeah, or just people who are obsessed with plastic surgery in general, how their face doesn't move. Or they kind of associate it with Botox and all plastic surgery in general, but specifically Botox is a little bit different. And it's not a case of uh, what, what we're seeing or what the comedians are talking about is probably where somebody had either too much plastic surgery where they've pulled the skin too tight, right? But if that hadn't happened, I mean, the Botox is going to make it so that you can't smile. It's not going to make it so that you, you can't speak. It's not going to make it any of that, That's the kind of things that make people nervous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, it's very safe and you'll still be able to show emotion. So we'll make sure that you're aware of what to expect. Okay. And so we're almost to the point where we do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. So I'm thinking maybe we talk about one or two of these and we'll make that the question of the day. Okay. So how about... How about this one? True or false, botulism toxin, which is what Botox is, by the way, pulls the skin taut. That's 100% false. It does not pull your skin in any way. It actually stops the muscle from moving. So your skin actually will stay the same tautness, but it'll just get any rid of any wrinkles that were caused by that muscle. Okay, so it just doesn't look wrinkled. It looks like it's taut, but it wasn't pulled taut. Yes, looks like it's taut, but was not actually pulled. I think that's a good question of the day, don't you? I think so. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that one. <laughs> okay, so let's do that. And I did forget to remind people earlier in the show, and I'm sorry about that, that we do a Dr. Kavitka's question of the day each week. You have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They're typically delivered to your place of business on Tuesday afternoon. And so let me give you the phone number now, since I didn't give you a much of an advance warning. It's 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. And we're, the question's going to be about whether getting Botox will pull your skin taut. Dr. Pagano said the answer is false. But before we do the contest, we'd like you to listen to this. 
This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. Okay, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. And today's question is, true or false, botulinum toxin pulls the skin taut. By the way, botulinum toxin is also known as Botox for short. True or false, Botox pulls the skin taut. All right, is that true or is that false? The winner's going to receive flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call, 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavico, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today, 614-262-9. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. Okay, and we're back. We have callers on the line, and before we go to the callers, I'd like to, I always ask Dr. Pagano to pick a number between one and four, because we have four listener lines. Which number should we use today to determine the winner of Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? Uh, so this is my fourth time being on the show, and before I believe I picked two, one, and four, so we're going to go with number three this time. Okay, caller number three it is. I remember that you hadn't used three yet. Don't want to be the third wheel, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Well, we got to give a little love to the third wheel. <laughs> okay, let's go to caller number three. And by the way, the caller number three, the third wheel, is Marjorie from Dublin. So uh, for those of you that didn't win, please sure to uh, call in next week. Okay, congratulations to our winner. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode 631 of The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. And I mentioned last week that I missed and didn't really tell you where I was. I actually had that creepy crud that's been going around. I just mm -hmm. felt terrible. And I think most of you have probably either know somebody that's having that now or uh, had it or maybe it's you. But uh, 
anyway, I just, you know, what I had was just something that just drained my energy and I made it to work and then I just had to go home and sleep. So sorry about that, but uh, now y'all know how to floss better. <laughs> anyway, it's from last week. So if you're just joining us, I just want to remind you, I have with me Dr. Mark Pagano. He's my associate. He's the future of the practice and he already was trained and was doing uh, Botox treatments and now he's brought that expertise and knowledge to this office for our office and it'll help a lot of our patients. So what we're doing is we're going over some of the misnomer the first one we gave you was true or false. That was the question of the day. Does Botox pull the skin taut? The answer was false. Here's another one for you, Dr. Pagano. Botulinum toxin is new and untested. Ha, is that true or false? No, that is very false. It's actually been around for a while, and it's FDA approved, and we deliver it in safe doses. So, you know, there's nothing to be worried about. It's something that has been around and has been, you know, it's tried and true. We, it's very reliable. Okay. And so the next one is... Botox can give you botulism. Is, is that true? <laughs> so I think the question is referring to botulism in terms of a lethal, botulism being lethal. So the toxin is actually a purified protein from a bacteria called Clostridium botulinum. And in high doses, it can actually, you know, be responsible for muscle paralyzing to the point where it can be fatal, but that's nowhere near the doses that we give you. So we normally give you about one vial per person and just so that you can kind of think about it in terms of how safe it is, you would need about 2,000 to 3,000 vials in order for it to be considered lethal. So the dosage that we're giving to you is nowhere near going to cause you any kind of issues, systemic issues or death or anything like that. Okay, and that's because it's all purified proteins. Yeah, it's purified proteins and we give it to you in minuscule amounts. Okay. All right, let's do another one. Another one would be, true or false, I will lose sensation and will have numbness where the botulinum toxin is injected. That is very false. So you do not lose any kind of sensation. If we give it to you in your forehead, you can still get flicked in the forehead and feel pain. There's no numbness that comes from it. It just, again, what we're doing is just putting the muscle to sleep. So that is truly the only side effect of the actual toxin itself. It actually works at where the nerve meets the muscle and it kind of prevents a neurotransmitter from being released so your nerve can't talk to your muscle and the muscle won't move. And that's truly the only effect that the toxin has. It only binds at that site and has no other side effects besides um, exactly what we're using it for. That's really cool. That's really cool. So this is the only for certain muscles in the face though, right? So I was thinking about this and it's the obicularis oris, which is around the mouth right? You have on your forehead, you have uh, around the eyes. Yeah, so we have, you have your frontalis, that's your forehead uh, muscles. We have your um, glabellar complex, that's if you make a frowny face, those two distinct lines you get right above your nose, we can make those go away. And then we also have the orbicularis oculi, which are we're responsible for crow's feet. So when you squint your eyes and you see those wrinkles on the side of your eyes, that we can actually help get rid of those as well. Okay, but it doesn't get rid of turkey neck. Actually, it can. That is just a technique that is a little bit more advanced um, that we haven't, we don't offer yet. But yeah, it actually can get rid of the lines that kind of show on your neck as well. Interesting. I did not know that. Okay. So yeah, so we'll have to get more information. And I, I always notice. I don't know, you ever notice this when uh, you watch uh, somebody on either the evening news or any any show. I'm talking about women primarily, and they do their uh, awesome makeup face looks perfect and then their neck and like the area right uh, right below their neck is like a different color or has freckles or or has wrinkles and it's like why don't we work down there why don't people do that too yeah I don't think a lot of people know that that is an option that they're able to get rid of those lines but yeah they actually are and I guess a lot of people don't really apply makeup to their neck either they yeah, but why not I'm not sure yeah <laughs> they think people aren't looking <laughs> I mean, it's like, especially if they have like a high cut dress, there's just a little bit more area that if there was makeup there too, would, would make everything so smooth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I just think that it's something that kind of, people are probably annoyed that they're already putting a lot of makeup on their face. They don't want to have to spread it to the rest of their body. Possibly. Or maybe afraid they'll get on their clothes. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's that as well. <laughs> okay. So let's do another one where we want to maybe uh, uh, dispel any myths. So... This is the one I kind of referred to with Nancy Pelosi, and it's just the comedians because they joke, but it, it says, Botox freezes your face and makes you lose expression. So, you know, this whole show we've been talking about how, you know, Botox puts your muscles to sleep. So, you know, your first thought is, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to move anything in my face. I'm not going to be able to show emotion. But a proper injector 
can make sure that you still are able to emote emotion. At proper dosages and proper placement, you're able to still move your eyebrows. You're able to still squint your eyes a little bit, you know, so people can tell what sort of expression that you're trying to make or feeling you're trying to convey. So, you know, while some people do have that frozen face, that's often from facelifts or over dosage of botulinum toxin. Whereas here, we do it safely and make sure that you're able to show emotion and we're giving it at proper dosage. Okay, that sounds cool. That's really cool. So I think, okay, we have any more in here? We do. Yep, one more myth, I guess. Here's another one, and then uh, we'll go to a break. Botulism toxin is dangerous when used for aesthetic purposes. Again, yeah, no, not dangerous. We're using the purified protein at very, very, very minuscule amounts, so it's nothing that will cause any kind of danger, especially when it's used for aesthetics, because that's what it is mostly used for. Okay, well, that sounds good. So when we come back, I want to talk a little bit more about some of the details, some of the things people need to think about before having Botox, and some of the things they might need to do after having Botox. We'll cover those when we come back. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko and my associate, Dr. Mark Pagano. Episode 631, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Reigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Okay, we're back. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode, what, 631 of The Reasons We Smile. And if you've been listening, I have with me Dr. Mark Pagano. He offers Botox, has been doing it for quite a while, and he has the office all set up so that we are now offering it at Dr. Kavitko and Associates as well. And so we want to talk with him about some of the things that you do before you have Botox. So somebody calls us today, uh, they want to schedule on Monday. What would they need to be doing between now and their appointment at, say, 2 p.m. on Monday? Is there anything special? So there's not too much special, just a couple things to consider. So you shouldn't be getting Botox if you're experiencing any kind of flu or cold symptoms. So that's something that's kind of going around now. So just make sure that you're not sick when you come in and get the actual toxin injected in you. Also, a lot of people like to get Botox for special events. They have a wedding coming up. They think about it last minute and think, I can get Botox real quick the week of, and then I'll look great for the wedding. The problem with that is that Botox actually takes two to 10 days to go to its full effect. So it takes a little bit of time for you to actually notice the wrinkles go away. So if you come in three days before a special event, you're not going to look how you want to look from the injections because it actually takes a little bit more time to wait. And then one more consideration before is we don't want you to wear any makeup before you come in and just, you know, come in nice and fresh face so that we can deliver the injections properly. Okay. And that's cool. And then uh, during the procedure, you don't do anything but just kind of sit still and let us put the, the little needles in. And like you said, they barely feel it. Yeah, you just sit still. You tell us what areas you want treated, and then we get rid of those wrinkles. So does this work as well in somebody who's 72 as it does in somebody that's 56? Yeah, it does work as well. So what you have to think about is it only gets dynamic wrinkles. So wrinkles that you get when you move your forehead or wrinkles you get when you squint your eyes. So if you have I wish you guys could see him. He's doing all these movements <laughs> while he's talking. 
talking. I'm sorry. I wish I had a camera on him. I didn't mean to interrupt, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no. So if you have just standing wrinkles that you have just kind of while your face isn't moving, it won't treat those, but it will treat the ones that you get from moving muscles. Okay, understood. And then after you've had your Botox, what kind of considerations are there? So once you get your Botox, the first four hours afterwards is the most important time for the toxin. That's when it's binding to the actual neuromuscular site that we were talking about to freeze the muscle. So you have to make sure that you're not touching any of the sites that we injected in, not even a little bit. You don't touch them for anything because you can spread the toxin into other sites and cause other muscles to freeze. So we, that's the one thing. When you come in, we will tell you that a hundred times. Do not touch your face for four hours at least. Okay, what if you get a little itch? Can you do lightly? Yeah, lightly, lightly, but you know, we're going to stress it to you so that you think of it as a great concern and you're not thinking of it as something just as a light issue. It is uh, truly any kind of issues that normally arise are from people rubbing their face. Okay, well, that's good to know, and it's a simple thing. Just don't rub your face. Yeah. Okay, I think people get that. Okay, and then anything else? Yeah, we also want you to stay out of sunlight for those first four hours as well. Because it's a protein, they're often heat sensitive. So sitting in direct sunlight where we just injected this protein can make the purified protein less viable, you know, less successful in doing its job. So we also recommend you stay out of sunlight as well. Would tanning beds be also included in that? <laughs> yeah, no tanning beds and also no microdermabrasia, facials, nothing for at least a day after. Okay. And how long will it take somebody when they're here to have their actual Botox injections? Oh, it's like a, it's a quick, quick, quick procedure. It truly takes 15, 20 minutes once you're in the chair. So it's nothing that, you know, you'll be stuck in a dental office for hours and hours. Okay. They can do it on their lunch break before work after work oh absolutely yep the only other uh, the only thing about that is you can also have bruising it's really not that common but it can occur and we want to tell you that that is possible so if you have any kind of event that you're going to you have to expect that you could have a little bit of bruising and sites of injection but we try to do good technique to try to minimize that as much as possible sounds good doc so basically plan ahead Make sure it's a week to 10 days before the big event and probably think of uh, maybe even a day or two before any small event in case you got a bruise or two. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I, I think we hit everything. Also, try n no working out or you know, anything crazy afterwards for a couple hours as well. We just want to let that botulinum toxin do its job and bind to its site. I bet you a lot of people are going to be so sad that they can't work out. Yeah, they will. <laughs> and actually, some another fact, when you do go work out, let's say you get it in your forehead, botulinum toxin actually decreases sweating in those areas too. So if you notice that you're not sweating in your forehead, it's because you got the toxin there and then, you know, you're not going to have the experience it in that area. Some people actually get it in their underarms too, so they don't get those pit stains. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you that. <laughs> yeah, it's actually, it actually is kind of common uh, for people to do that. But, you know, again, it only lasts three months, so those pit stains will come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hey, Doc, thank you so much for uh, sharing all that information with us. We really appreciate it. And folks, there you go. You can give the office a call, 614-262-9588 and say so you want to make your appointment to get uh, your Botox treatment. So, hey, I want to also uh, mention to Marjorie that your flowers may not arrive until Wednesday because tomorrow is President's Day. I forgot to mention that. There's also a chance they'll arrive on time, but won't know till we talk to the florist, to DeSantis. Okay, so hey, folks, uh, hopefully this, was, this show was very informative uh, for those of you that were thinking about doing bo Botox and maybe haven't done so because you thought it was dangerous in some way. Um, this should be a lot of help. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned before, we are in the beauty business with our smile makeovers, porcelain veneers, orthodontics, you know, things that make a person look uh, better, their best self, so to speak. We hear a lot about living your best life. And so what better way to live your best life than to have, you know, beautiful teeth, gorgeous skin, you know, gorgeous face and feel real confident about uh, yourself and about the things that uh, as you go about your daily business, right? So anyway, yeah, I'm real excited. Uh, you know, I received the training for Botox uh, in San Diego several years ago, but I didn't offer it back then because I was afraid. I didn't know what the dental board was going to say about a dentist uh, jumping into that realm. But over time, what's happened is, is uh, there are ADA codes for this now. The dental board is perfectly fine with it, and it just does make a lot of sense because uh, we do, we dentists do a lot of, uh, we use needles every day. I mean, you know, over and over and over again. And I, I don't know if you remember, but I, I'm, um, I was probably the only dentist uh, certified to do the H1N1 flu vaccinations. Um, so I was approved to actually vaccinate people against the flu. 
And so what happened was is the dental board and the pharmacy board and the medical board recognized the fact that as a dentist, especially when doing IV sedation like I do, I use a lot of needles. <laughs> and so um, a needle in my hand is not dangerous. And in fact, I try to do it as you know comfortably as I possibly can. So And so does Dr. Pagano, by the way. So he's a good guy and we're looking forward to uh, uh, getting this ramped up. But literally, we're, we're ready. Give us a call on Monday. Okay, I think that's all the time I have for today's show. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And visit my office Facebook page, which is Dr. Kavitko and Associates. If you'd like us, that'd be great. Remember that all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 614- 262-9588 or send an email to speaking at the...